There are a couple of other things I want to do to the geometry just to make it easier to select. I want to be able to change the color of some of these boundaries on the edges. So I'm going to go to my level manager and I'm going to turn off my solid model. And again, I'm going to pick a new and unique color. This time I'm going to pick something darker, a little bit easier to see. And I'm going to right click and go to a front view. And what I want to do is change the color of all this wireframe that's at this level and then at the top level. So I'm going to right click on my color and when it says select the entities to change the color of I want to pick this with a window. So I'm just going to put a real thin window around that. And then I'll put another thin window around the wireframe on the top. Now I didn't pick it as one big window because I don't want to get these angled lines that connect the two chains. I just want to get the top boundary and the lower boundary. So I will end my selection. I'm going to go with the default color so I'll just hit OK. And now those chains are in that blue color. So I'm going to go back to my level manager and turn my solid model back on and we're going to OK this. Now let's go to our tool paths. We're going to go to our multi-axis tool paths. I'm going to go with the default name. And for this tool path we're going to use a classic Swarf tool path. For our tool, we'll select a tool from the library and I'm going to grab a one inch flat end mill. And we'll put in a comment. And I'm just going to say, swarf the top edge. Now, for our cut parameters, there's a couple ways that we can do this. I can pick surfaces and it will side cut along those surfaces or I can use those two chains and it will lay the cutter across those two chains. For this first example, we're going to use surfaces. So let's select those surfaces. Now, I could pick my surfaces that are on a separate level, or I can also activate solid selection and tell it that I only want to pick faces. And I'll pick these individual faces that go around this top tapered edge. and we'll end that selection. Now it says select the first surface. This is the first surface that you want to machine. So I'll say we want to cut this surface first. And now you'll see there's a little arrow on there with my cursor. And the prompt is asking us to select the first lower rail. The lower rail determines the direction that the tool is pointing. So I want the bottom of the tool to be on this bottom edge. So I move my arrow down to that bottom edge, give it a click. Now there's an arrow showing a cut direction. And I'm going to tell it to reverse that direction because I want it to do a climb cut going around that profile. So here's my bottom rail and my starting point. And we'll OK that. Compensation type. I want it to comp in the computer and I want it to be to the left of those surfaces. We can also tell it to enter at the middle of the first wall or enter at the start of the first wall. I don't want it to start at the middle. I want it to start off the edge of the first wall. For our tool axis control, there's not a whole lot that we need to change in here. I am going to tell it for back plotting purposes that my rotary axis is going to be through Z. And of course, our output format is set to 5-axis. And for our collision control, well, there's really nothing that we're going to run into because even across that top edge, the tool will be clear all the way around. But I'm going to use lower rail control. And I think you'll find a lot of times with Swarf toolpaths, this is probably the preferred method. In this case, I want to use lower rail control because I can control a distance above or below that rail. 
Now in this case, there's nothing below that rail. So I'm going to tell it to actually cut past the rail by a hundred thousandths. That way the exact bottom edge of the tool isn't at the bottom edge of the rail. It won't leave a little burr along that edge because it'll cut past the bottom rail. Next we'll go to our linking parameters and we'll expand this dialog for the linking parameters. And I'm going to go to my entry exit. We're going to tell it that we want to do an entry and for our entry curve I want the curve length to be equal to 100% of the diameter of the tool. And the curve thickness will make that 30% of the tool. And I want it to be to the left as it cuts around the profile. And for our exit curves, I'm just going to use the same values. So when I press the bottom arrow, it moves these values down to the bottom. So our entry and exit curve values will be the same. And we'll OK this. There's our toolpath. And if we rotate that around a little bit this way, you'll be able to see here how it leads on, cuts around, and then leads off. 